Anime fans, One Piece fans, what's good? The answer to that question, of course, is One Piece. One Piece is what's good. Today, we are going to be discussing a live discussion about Luffy's Awakening. And today, we have guests Z-Boy and Vulture Valley with us. What's going oh. on, you know? Crap. Where's the lady people? Wait, what's going on? <laughs> Nothing. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay. Where's the lady people in there, man? How you doing, y'all? This your boy Z Boy, and with all the other crew, talking about that One Piece. Why? Great. These intros, I'm so down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, basically, Luffy versus Kaido. That's a big discussion, but everyone agrees Luffy's gonna have to power up to take him down. One of the biggest things that Luffy's gonna have to get, people assume, is Devil Fruit Awakening. We saw Doflamingo and Katakuri have that and all that, but so, first of all, I just want to ask you, what do you think Luffy's Awakening is gonna give him? Do you think he's gonna be able to, like, turn the ground into rubber and just have Kong guns flying up out of the ground and stuff? What do you um... think? As far as I can tell, whenever uh, we have Devil Fruits in any capacity, like even before Awakening, they kind of fit to the character. Of course, that's a you know writing choice. You're gonna you know kind of bring out the quad light, like kind of like Doflamingo is a manipulative person, so having kind of a puppet mastery fruit works for him, and then um, in battle to ki- to, t- to kind of give him that edge and to kind of cement him as one of the best warlords he took all those strings and kind of just gave him like puppets basically, but they're just like over OP puppets, you know, those fucking 16 Holy bullets, all the things he can do with that. And I think uh, it suits him. And I think Dofi's probably the only one that can bring out that side of the fruit uh, of the Ito Ito no me, just like Mm -hmm. Luffy and how versatile and how kind of inventive he is with his thinking kind of perfectly can use the rubber fruit better than anyone else. And whenever we see Luffy get a power up, it's not one that's, um, it's not straightforward, but it's not too complicated. You know what I'm saying? So I feel yeah. like him controlling stuff would not fit within Luffy's character at all. So I think it will be more of something along the lines that's more inward based that's Luffy trying to get himself to the peak of physical condition is not going to be him doing some puppet master stuff. It's going to be him punching you as hard as he can in different various ways. So we see him kind of focusing on the uh, a certain type of hockey right now. And whenever Luffy learns or focuses on whatever kind of hockey, he gets a mode for it. So I'm thinking he's going to get some kind of mode where he's going to be able to either uh, produce – or just sustain like mm. this kind of aura or or force field around him where shit gets repelled, kind of like um taking the elasticity into it to a whole nother level to where it kind of yeah um, radiates off his body like shit coming off him it just kind of bounces off of him. You can take that and twist that any way you can, but it's going to be generally around the new ability he has, and then making his fruit go with it in some kind of cool way. Yeah. I'm prone to agree Luffy doesn't seem to be the manipulative man, manipulative kind of guy. Z-Boy, what do you think? Man, I think, uh, I know people may hate it because it may sound cliche, but honestly, I think it's going to be similar to Dofi's where it's like he turns the entire area into rubber and he's going to have like giant fists and he's going to combine it with uh, his gear four attacks. It's going to be like mm. gigantic, uh, shoot, I forgot. I haven't read One Piece so long, I forgot, I forgot the name of uh, his gear four attacks but kong gigantic, yeah gigantic kong gun gapling or something yeah i i'm actually a big fan of the vulcanized and the vulcanized rubber thing where like luffy right now all his attacks from like base form to gear four gear fourth form they're all like the rubber and the rubber band so i think his awakening He's going to be able to become like vulcanized rubber, which is like tire rubber. So imagine gear four, which is like that soft rubber band rubber, except with like t- car tire rubber or something like that. And I think he's going to be co- his attacks are going to be like infinitely stronger. They're going to be way, way, way stronger. And I think he's also going to be able to revert to um, size rubber, which will make him almost untouchable, like that 
feet. Kaido had a falling 10,000 feet. Luffy will be able to do that easily if he can't already. He'll be able to fall something like, probably like a 60,000 feet or something. Because so, so since he's going to be... Is... um. Li- Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go on. Oh, but I'm saying yeah, yeah, go th- if Luffy has... Uh, vulcanized rubber. He'll be way stronger, way harder, way sturdier and then if he's able to also switch to liquidized rubber, he'll nearly be a Logia. He'll practically be a special paramecia like Katakuri. So basically, he's gonna kind of take what Katakuri did and make people think he's a Logia. Like, uh, like, he, like, the mochi, since it's so um, malleable, Kind of mm-hmm. to, like move it whenever the bullets were kind of in conjunction with his uh his own other fighting ability, his hockey ability. And since Luffy's most, well, not most, but like the one he uses in fighting the most, the armament hockey, he's going to be able to um go from extremely tough tire rubber to really soft in like an instant, like switching back and forth, like like that. Like he'll use the the tire hardening for like attacking and then when he gets attacked he'll turn to the liquid rubber and kind of move out of the way or roll off of it kind of deal yeah that kind of deal or maybe the liquid rubber will just make it like he, maybe he won't be able to do what katakuri did but like when he gets hit he'll just be able to tank way 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 more like he'll be able to tank kaido's mace attack with these and then of course add on advanced talkie and gear five and all that stuff He'd be pretty strong. Do you think um, there will be a continuation of his uh, kind of attack speed and defense kind of deal going on w- with his new level of hockey? Or you think it's going to kind of consolidate into one form where it's like it kind of takes advantage of all of them or only specializes in one? You know what I mean? Because he has different forms because like yeah. – uh, tank man's defense, bound man's attack, and snake man's defense. Will that continue, or will it be more like a they'll just be a one type of deal? I think at the very, very end, like in his final, final form, it'll be like everything, like absolutely everything attack, defense, uh, speed, like it will all be in one form. I'm not sure about right now because I don't so know if he's gonna. Point, pa- so at some point, the the, the whole three yeah. forms is going to go away. So is that only in the final form, or is he going to have a form before that, and then he's going to perfect that form? It could be either, to be honest. And I think that's going to heavily... Um, well, I guess he might kind of have to switch, because I think um, his main power... I think Luffy's Gomu Gomu Awakening, his Devil Fruit Awakening, I think that's going to heavily, heavily impact how he grows for the rest of the story because his awakening is probably going to be one of the most overpowered devil fruit awakenings we've seen in the series and ever will see in the series but I thought because the point was like, oh, wait do, do you mean like like his awakening in itself like if anyone wants to get this fruit and awaken it it will be op or it's going to be some plot armor like main character stuff going on no nah. like difference. Like I feel like you know, like laws fruit you give anybody, it would be OP. Are you just saying? Like, yeah. It, so which one are you saying? Like the main character thing? Like is this going to be main character OP? No, I I'm I saying the... I don't think it's going to be actually strong. I think it's going to be like a Luffy thing. Like, only Luffy can make this OP. <laughs> yeah. Z boy, what do you think? Man, listen. Uh. I'm trying to figure out what y'all think because it sounds like y'all thinking it's going to be like uh, because from what we've seen from Awakening so far, it seems to be for the most part just turn the area into like pretty much what their ability is. Like we haven't seen any like like of course, you know, it'd be way more creative for Oda to do something completely different, but we haven't really seen anything uh, besides that, like what's up? Zones Awakening and there's more yeah. physical inward type of deal. Yeah, no they're, they're zones. we only see manipulators really like prayer mecia manipulator types awaken. So that's the only way. Right. And Logius, who already control the substance, Luffy doesn't do that, so it wouldn't make sense. Luffy's more similar to Zoan than a Logia, which is why I'm kind of thinking that his awakening would be less manipulative and more physical. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That's why I said he'd like turn the area to rubber, had like giant fists and stuff, and like. 
Right. At all. But, 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 but that's forward. manipulative. We're saying that's not going to be the case because there, right. because like for Doflamingo makes sense because his whole fruit, he's been thinking about how to control shit and we can't switch up all of a sudden. And then Luffy's now controlling 20 fists. Like he, he's never done that before. It wouldn't make sense for him to all of a sudden be able to control 20, you know, rubber fists out of nowhere. Yeah. Hmm. A kind of was used to controlling large areas of magma. Uh, Aokiji was used to controlling large areas of ice. So awakening was just awakening the ability that's already there, not producing a whole new spectrum of abilities. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the the sixteen holy bullets was just a bigger overheat, really. Like doing overheat or the the one with the really long name, just him doing the bullet string, but just in a bigger form. It, it didn't right. make it all of a sudden. Now Doflamingo's made of strings and he can do shit with strings like Luffy can with rubber. Like that wouldn't make sense. It, it more yeah. it goes along with the theme or the motif of your fruit already. Hmm. At least that's how I see it. You know, I, I could be completely wrong. I've definitely been wrong about fruits before. <laughs> yeah. But, that that yeah. is possible because like uh yeah, cause cause Katakuris and Dofies, their fruits, um, Aren't just like, or I put it like their their bodies really aren't their fruits, right? Like Katakuri, he isn't um like really made of mochi, really. Well, he did turn into like mochi. mochi. Like he, nah. he like 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 didn't he go into the ground and become mochi? So, Katakuri was made of mochi because remember the whole reason Luffy couldn't hit him was because Katakuri was made of mochi. He could make some of his body sift out into the rest of his body, therefore creating a hole which Luffy's fist went through. I know, and I'm saying, like, Katakuri is the one, like, paramecia that's different because he's a special paramecia, but we we don't see Doflamingo turning into strings or, uh, like, mm. other paramecias turning into their things, you know what I'm saying? Luffy, no, Luffy is made of rubber all the time. Right. Yeah, but he, so, but he can't freely manipulate that rubber into, like, Going into the ground like how like how to curry like he can't do stuff like like he can't open up a hole in his body. Maybe like, that is what his awakening is. Maybe he can like do like stuff that people be thinking like right like people want him to be like Mister Fantastic like you know uh, mm-hmm. going through keyholes and stuff. So his awakening yeah. might be something like that where he's like I'm the ultimate form of rubber now break next week. Yeah, yeah that, that was a uh, that, that, that's what Blue was saying. That's actually a theory like. That Luffy's actually a special paramecia once he awakens. And I think that. I thought he is now. Well, he could or he could not. Because the thing is, the reason Katakuri is a special paramecia is because he is. For a Logia, there's a couple requirements. You gotta be made of a substance and you gotta be able to manipulate. You gotta be able to. Your body has to be made of that sub- substance and you kind of have to be. Intangible, and you've got to be able to manipulate that sub. You got to be able to manipulate that substance, like how a kainu can, like throwing up, uh, calling down meters and stuff. And then produce producer paramecias are you're not made of that substance, but you can secrete that substance and control that substance, like around you, and you can make more. Logias can't make more of themselves, like they can't make. Crocodile, he can't make more sand come out of his body. His body is all the sand he has, and he has been... I think it's because of his awakening, but he can manipulate the sand around him. But the thing is, Katakuri, Katakuri was made of mochi, and he could produce mochi, which is why he was the special paramecia. But Luffy can't produce more rubber. And he can't, well, like... I, I don't think... Um, I thought that there was, like, different uh, categories of being special paramecia. I, I didn't yeah. know. Like you, you could only do it because um, I thought Luffy was special, special paramecia because well, he he's... was made of it and he can freely manipulate it. He Man- could be a special. I'm oh, sorry. So... Keep going. He could be know. a special. Yeah, yeah. He could be a special paramecia, but Oda, I don't think Oda ever called him that. I think he's just been referred to as the paramecia. Yeah, he's just a paramecia for now, but that could be yeah. the case. Uh, I mean. I mean, um, Crocodile can, like, okay, this may be crazy, but Crocodile, basically, like, he can gain sand, sand around the area and use it. Because, like, if Luffy were to touch rubber, like, it may sound kind of weird, but can he, like, 
have that rubber come apart of him or something? I don't think I don't he's think ever he tried, can. and I don't think we've ever seen it. Because have we ever seen Luffy actually touch like pure rubber before, or like something with a rubber on it? No, it'd be, it'd be hilarious if Luffy never thought of doing it, but he could do it this whole time. <laughs> yeah, that would actually be funny, I'll, bro. <laughs> like it's actually canon. Like Luffy's just that stupid. He had a whole power set and he never like, used it. Yeah, <laughs> like I can't see why Katakuri couldn't. Like you know, he would like I don't know, touch Mochi. It could just be like added to him or something. Like I don't know, it could well, be something. Where like yeah, a we that. like that would be interesting. Like if pair, like it should it, like. If some paramecias could control the substance, like like they never knew they were manipulators because whatever their paramecia is, it's so like finite and rare that you would never run across it to you know like figure it out. Like Kat- Katakuri probably could control Mochi. It's just where's he gonna get Mochi from? It, well, he is on right. Project Island, but I've never like seen them. Like all right, here Katakuri. Like I would try it if I was Katakuri. You know? Well, but Katakuri doesn't need to because he can already secrete Mochi from his body. He can make Mochi out of nothing. Right, and and that's like you know, but it's like if you're on a food island and you're you might as well be like the minister of Mochi and have an entire island. That's why if someone come on your island, you can right. fucking just control the whole island. Yeah. But I don't like Luffy being able to like manipulate, turn the ground into rubber or manipulate rubber. I would not be surprised at all if that was his awakening or if he can already like do the whole manipulate external rubber thing. But I still, Luffy's always been like a physical guy. Like, think about it. Gear second, that was turning his blood so he could become faster. Gear third, he enlarged his body so it could be like a giant. Gear fourth, he made himself a bit bigger, bouncy, his skin bouncy, and he was super strong. His power-ups have always been in terms of physical strength and speed, so I don't really think that's gonna that's gonna stop now. I don't really see that happening. Well, I do see that happening, but I think his, I think his awakening would be more like having a being stronger, being able to take more tank, more damage, being faster, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, going off the whole fun thing, I could easily see it could be something fun where it's like, I don't know, Luffy just carries around a bunch of rubber bands, right? And then it's like, he like <laughs> asking them to himself, and they're like, what you doing? And it's like, <laughs> it's like extra skin. It's like, no, I'm serious though. It's like extra skin and it's like super floppy or something. And it's like, I'm flop man or something. I can easily see that happening. Hilarious. That sounds like One Piece and old. I can easily see that happening. I'll be with that a thousand percent. (laughs) Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, quick, quick. Um, so with uh awakenings, um, kind of like Luffy's forms. Do you think he's gonna have a overall like like one of the hockey's as its theme, like? Like the awakenings we've seen, they kind of just been by themselves, like 100% the fruit. But we've seen double fruits com- combined with, you know, hockey before with the nail. But when he went kind of in his own way, awakening to that giant thunder baby, like. That was epic. He basically became a lightning Sengoku. Basically. And that's kind of his awakening or yeah. his, like Zoan type form. Because that, that couldn't, that honestly. With the amount of control and en- Enru had over his shit, like he definitely that that couldn't even have been his awakening. That could have just been something he came up with on his own, and there could yeah. be a whole other level to it. As far you know, if Oda really really wanted to go that way with it, so it's like, will Luffy combine his hockey with his form, or will it be purely a fruit based thing? Because a lot of people is thinking of it going to be like a gear fifth, but these gears isn't necessarily his awakening. Yeah, so this could be something completely separate. Like his forms and his awakening could be two different things. Well, that's what I'm. That's what I'm kind. That's what I think because, like, in terms of hockey, we've seen Luffy. We've seen Luffy. Um put lightning on his hockey and we've seen Luffy put fire on his hockey. I think me like many others that's gonna be the advanced form of hockey. So I think that Luffy's awakening will not be a form, but it will be the substance of his rubber. So he will have his his gear fourth will be like awakened. His gear second will be awakened. His gear third will be awakened. And then he might have like flaming hockey or electric hockey or both like on top of that. I think his awakening is going to be like how his rubber is. It's not going to be a form. And I just 
P.S. I don't really think NL statue was his awakening. I think his awakening would be like all the other Logias. But I think that um lightning statue was just his pure innovativeness. Like how Gear 4 isn't Luffy's awakening or, or something. That's just how smart he is in terms of using his devil food. Right. I do too. Well, that makes sense. If um so so Luffy is ba- ba- is basically what you're saying is Luffy's gonna take his um take his awakening and make a form out of it basically or incorporate it into the form that he already has. Incorporate it into the forms he already has because like Luffy's awakening, like you know how gear but second it, it's like uh, a it's like a rubber band, but then the gear second hit he would still have gear second, but his skin would be or his body would just be way harder, stronger, and faster, but it's still gear second. You see what I'm saying? That so, means, like, but but when he need another form though for it, if it's going to be a different type of hockey, like he like he doesn't use gear second with armor and hardening, like he should have done that already, but he doesn't because it's well, like that particular well, style Hawk. of hockey needs to be used in a different way. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. if 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 the entire makeup of his body is going to change he would need a different form to figure out how to use it you know what i'm saying because luffy doesn't take what he knows and puts it on what he has already he kind of just True. makes it something else so i, well, feel, I like, feel like he would have a different form for it because it's going to act differently like it, it, it wouldn't work out with the forms he has because they're so fine-tuned to what he already has going on i think dragon man could be that i think he could possibly make a dragon man because we saw on um, ruskina or however you say it Ruskina. when he fought all those when he fought all those animals yeah he um when he, he fought them it. he made a form off of them like snake man snake man snake not the snake snake man the uh ape a uh, bow man and he, probably he has like tiger man or lion man or something like that but i think that might have been foreshadowed since kaido was a dragon or even if it's just his devil fruit i think Luffy might make another form to overcome another animal, and that could possibly be Gear Fifth or something like that. And he might mm-hmm. make it after he gets his awakening or something. So then the awakening would be part of Gear Fifth or Dragon Man or whatever it would be called. That I is a possibility. I, can totally I think. See him having a Dragon Killer move, like Gomu yeah. Gomu no Dragon Killer. I'm, I'm <laughs> that. That'd be yeah. Yeah. I don't think. I don't think we're getting a Gear Fifth. I think we're just getting like more forms of Gear Four, and I think like. If like a whole Dragon Man, then it is possible. I mean, Luffy creates fire all the time, so I can at least see that yeah. being incorporated, you know. And just like you know, a thing, like you said, how he creates different things with his hockey, like the lightning and stuff. He could easily do something with fire. But y'all think we'll get like something like Godzilla Man, where it's like, oh, where it's like with the Awakening, right? It's like um, Luffy turns the area into like rubber, and then like he he puts down on top of himself, and he becomes like enormous. Because like we gotta remember, like y'all saying the whole manipulating, changing the body and stuff. You know, this is Luffy in Oda too, right? And they're known for doing goofy things. Like yeah. I, you know, a lot of people didn't like Gear Four because they thought it was like too goofy. Like mm-hmm. uh, they wanted to be like cool at first, but. The way it was created was like very interesting and unique. Um, mm-hmm. Just in a goofy way. Yeah. It could be like that because Oda, like, I'm just being honest. I doubt most of the One Piece fans would have even thought of Gear 4th being a possibility. I would not have been able to come up with Gear 4th in yeah, any right. amount of lives with any amount of time I've, I'd have. I'd never be able to think up Gear 4th. So, uh, Gear fifth or any or his final form of gear four or strongest form could be something we completely do not expect. But I still think it's gonna be a tie to the awakening of his devil fruit because that's gonna boost him in strength so much, especially when he has advanced hockey and uh new forms and stuff like that. I think as far as the uh, look of is gonna go, I think you're hundred percent right. We're the way it looks. Because I think everyone's going with the whole shrunk down phase. Like, whenever they do uh, the fan art or think about what it could possibly be. And a lot of people really go to speed because Luffy got speed blitz and bound man. Mm. And a lot of the people are, like, appearing out of nowhere. And usually when you have someone 
at the top of the tier list. They're usually like d- like dumb sh- dumb fast for no reason. You can't see them when they move. So having a smaller version of Luffy will make sense because he's already small as it is. Speed is kind of his thing whenever he's not like mm. going up. So uh, that will make sense. I don't really see him having another um, and, and, and unless he kind of like really digs in on his fruit natural way it is like like as soon as he ate the fruit without any training or knowing anything luffy luffy's defensive stat went through the roof because he no longer took majority of damage from a lot of things but he gained like negative you know to cutting damage and hockey covers that now so so he doesn't have to i don't know i don't know if that's that. really so I think, what i don't know if the cut thing is really a negative because i mean no, most no, people I mean, like as soon as he got the fruit like he he's weak to cutting attacks. Like that's the only thing that can like get him. So oh, it's like yeah. a, yeah. I, I get what so, you're saying. I get what you're saying. It's like that was just kind of like a weakness of him, but it's not like the fruit like made him like more weaker to cut attacks. Cause uh just in general, like one piece characters, like no matter how strong they is, they be getting hurt by like bullets and swords and stuff. True, true. So yeah, I, I see what you're saying. So not really negative, it's just like it can cut him. He's yeah. not impervious. Yeah, him, I feel it. So yeah, so, so I feel like defense is what he's really going to go into, and bigger forms usually boast that defense. And I feel like Luffy's going to kind of flip the narrative for like bigger characters getting fucked up, like Oars. Uh, there's just big yeah. characters in general just getting wasted because they're too big and can't do anything. So I feel like his bound man, he's either going to make that bigger, but going to make it like better because. Um, Kaido is immense, and I feel I feel like his hyperphone is going to be big too, but it's going to be fast. So I feel like Luffy is going to be kind of like that. Like he's not going to be as big as Kaido, yeah. maybe not even as half, but he's still going to be bigger, not like compact, like a lot of people think. Yeah, the, well, guy, the Godzilla man. Yeah, well, <laughs> I I'm gonna tell you what I think because I think Luffy's going to be Kaido one v one, but let's not talk about that. Whether he does or not, I'm going to tell you what I think. Luffy's gonna look like when he fights Kaido for the final time, whether he had help or not, that doesn't matter. So I think he's gonna have wait, wait, why why doesn't help matter? We we not well, no, no, I'm it. saying well I'm no, I'm saying I this is what I think his power up is gonna be. I'm saying whether this is gonna be as strong as Kaido or whether it won't be as strong as Kaido is up for a different time. I think okay. he's gonna have I think he has um He's going to have a new form. I'm not completely sure what it looks like, but I think it's kind of going to be like, you know how tire rubber looks? I think his yeah. skin might kind of look like that. I don't know what shape he'll be in. I think he's going to have the new form. As I said, he's going to be awakened and he'll be able to like, when Kaido punches him, like when Kaido came at him with Divine Thunder, when Luffy got one shot before, I think Luffy's just going to be able to like turn the liquid to rubber and be able to tank that easy no problem but what i also think is because you know how we've seen hockey more than once we've seen uh thor elephant gun it was elephant gun but luffy had lightning around it we saw red hawk it was um it was uh what you call it it was jet pistol but with um with fire around it we saw a category's flaming mochi it was uh spike mochi or something but just with fire around it I think that Luffy is going to have a full body hockey, but he's going to be blazing electric or both. And then I think that's what he's going to kind of be. I think that's what his Yonko level form is going to look like. Or even if it's not Yonko level, I think that's what he's going to take against Kaido. What do y'all think? Z Boy? Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to be Yonko level at the end of his arc. You know, I mean, I don't want to call out names, but we know a certain person in the community who said Luffy's gone solo Big Mom. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually thinking. don't know who that is. We'll it inform you post stream. We'll let you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was probably me. It was, it was probably me because it like, was, it, it I don't wasn't, think he's going to do that now, but I think Big Mom the strong as all the other Yonko. But I mean, like, once if he beats Kaido 1v1 and he's Yonko level, he could sell Big Mom because to be like on equal footing at that point, but that would only be if he beat Kaido one v one. You know what I'm saying? I think there's too much story left for Luffy to be a Yonko right now. I feel like well, I don't think there's much story go. left. 
You know, That's well, the I only that, reason. I think, I... I think there's enough stories left for him not to beat one right now. Maybe even an arc. Maybe as short as an arc later, but not right now because it just the the gap is too big from first to second commander. I mean, to first commander Dianco, and he can't cleanly beat a third commander. I like didn't... we haven't seen it. He may can do it because of all the 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 portrayal and what we think, but until he does it or shows feet greater than that, we can't say that he can beat. A third commander straight up. Well, I, I, I think, think Luffy, I think uh what's gonna happen is I don't think it's gonna be something where it's like uh like how everybody thinks it's gonna be like literally everybody just uh gang banging Kaido, like you know, the samurai. <laughs> 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 like you know like <laughs> I don't know why you're like that, but listen, listen, okay. You know how uh King of Lightning said uh it's like basically they're gonna need like all the supernovas, like Basically, a lot of people then they're gonna need like all the supernovas, everybody in the country, and all that, right? But um, yeah. I think I don't think Luffy will be able to take him one on one in the arc. But I think at the very least, it'll take the supernovas who are currently in Wano right now to take him on, and maybe uh, Luffy, a kid, or Luffy and Law will deal the final attack. Uh, uh, personally, man, thinking, but- if I hate cannon. Oh my bad. Go ahead. Yeah, so it'll at least, it'll least think... show they're close enough. It'll at least show they're close enough, but it'll still be like you still got a long way to go, Straw Hat. You know. Well, for me, Kaido, um, I think like all the hype he received. Well, honestly, I'm just gonna say two things on this matter before we get back to the subject of awakening. Like we know Oda always like hypes up the current villain, even though Kaido was kind of extra hype. But I honestly think that was kind of get us a bit hype because if you think about it. Like, everything Kaido did isn't, like, anything more impressive than Big Mom did. That's kind of a different stream. But also, the reason I think Luffy's going to beat Kaido Voi and V1 is, well, one, I think after this arc, Shanks going to show up or something, and they'll kind of go to Elbaf or something. Then they'll kind of, like, maybe a couple of arcs in between, and then they'll, like, go to Raftel, I think. Because all of that, if you think about it, one of those probably going to take like two years or something so i think all of that would take like the 10 years one piece is get, what not one piece i don't know why i said that one piece is guesstimated to be but like if you think about it every single arc luffy's done like no matter how strong the villain seemed like luffy was able to beat him like think back to alabasta like when alabasta happened the only idea we had of warlord was mihawk so when um, we were like oh man luffy's gonna be a Luffy's facing a warlord in this arc. We were all like, "Hold up, hold up! How's this gonna work? This is this is the warlord we're talking about, and we right?" Got but three Luffy ass pulls in a row. That's what we got. Luffy well, but, was ready to take on that dude. But Luffy, well, but Luffy ended up beating him anyway. But like Kaido, I think I, it might kind of fall out like Galabast, like fighting Kaido many times until he's as strong as it. But even if it's kind of a joke, even if it happens like Alabasta or um. <laughs> West Rosa, or maybe not just Rosa, even, not just Rosa, sorry. Even if it happens like Alabasta or uh, Skypea or Ennis Lobby, like Luffy has always done that, even if it seemed a bit forced to the fans. There's no reason Oda would stop that trend right now, just because it's Yonko. It, like, he's already stopped it, though. He, hmm? fought, he fought Magellan and never won. Like, he, he he's well, fought people and not beaten them before. So it's not like. But that's not beat. normal. I mean, it's not normal, but I mean, we're in the we're in the like the, saga, so I feel like crazy things gonna happen because he fought Big Mom, he didn't beat her. He fought Magellan, he didn't beat her. He, but he, as for right now, he fought Kaido and didn't beat him. He can come by, he can come back and beat him, but against the Yonko, and he fought Blackbeard and didn't beat him against the Yonko. So far, he's two, he's zero and two for fighting a Yonko and then coming back and beating him. So I don't, I think that trend, I think that trend may continue here with Kaido because I believe every arc, these Yonkos, Yonkos are going to get introduced. They're getting introduced. They're not going to get beating them. They're just being introduced to be used as some kind of plot device or some kind of tool for some other powerful character or in some other uh, Yonkos or powerful person's plot, just like Big Mom is being used right now in Kaido's plot. Like he's being introduced we know Kaido's not going on this arc because we still need to see the greatest war or at least know what's going on with him, where his origins, and that's not going to be solved with all the other stuff going on. Well, and that's why I think I, that One Piece is going to be a little longer than we think. So there's no way that Ka- Kaido's going to be taken down right now. Maybe Big Mom, because she's already had an arc or two, but she's still got stuff that needs to be resolved. 
Nah, but I can tell you something about what you said. Like, you, you know what you said? So here's yeah. the thing. So think about, um, uh, sorry, not Endless Lobby. Think about Impel Down. Impel mm -hmm. Down came out of nowhere. We were all thinking Marineford. Marineford was hyped up, but then Impel Down came out of nowhere. We're like, oh, what's this? Oh, this is cool. Same with Whole Cake Island. Whole Cake Island came out of nowhere. Like, nobody expected Whole Cake Island. We're like, oh, this is cool. And that was where Luffy didn't beat the main villain, like Magellan, Blackbeard, Big Mom. But when the arc has been hyped up for like three or four years at this point, and Luffy said, I'm going to destroy, I'm going to kick this person's butt. Like Luffy said that when the arc is hyped up this much, that's when Luffy comes through, whether it's forced or not, and beats his opponent. But like Whole Cake Island, like nobody saw that wasn't hyped up. That was like out of left field. Like people are like, kind of like, Okay, this is happening, kind of thing. But Wano Whole was like, Island "Boy, I've been hyped up since Fishman Island." What do you mean? Since no, Fishman Island, Whole Cake Luffy Island. I'm saying Luffy, she said Luffy said, "I'm gonna kick your ass, Big Mom." He didn't do it. Yes, but Whole Cake Island. I'm saying like they weren't making plans. Like people expected Whole Cake Island to come after Wano. So I'm saying in that sense. Like, we were thinking Big Mom was way more in the future than she actually was because of all the Wano hype. But um, I'm saying Big Mom, in that sense, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but most people, like, be before the whole Sanji reveal happened, we were expecting Luffy to go straight to Wano after Joe. At least I was. Like, were you not expecting I mean, him to? Because that I was kind of how it was set up. I'll be honest. I'll be honest, right? I wanted this stuff to happen. Like, you know, that's why it's kind of a meme right now where it's like Luffy stated like he'll solo all the Yonko, but it's like, you know, it's like it ain't looking too good no, right now. I think it will happen. Too. It will He's happen. Three right now. But it will happen, but not right now. Well, and, but, not, and not in like order. We're going to meet him all first, and then maybe he'll beat him in some kind of weird order. And it's definitely going to be mm. ass pulls, and it's definitely going to be like some different type of stuff. No, well, I don't I, think it'll be ass pull. I think it'll be ass pull if it happens at the end of arc. Because it'll be like I like like uh people That's stated like he did not beat Katakuri alone. I don't care what no one says. He didn't, he didn't really beat him Katakuri or Cracker alone. alone. Like, yeah. You, you no, can't but Cracker alone if there's someone else there. Not Cracker, <laughs> Cracker with yeah. Cracker. No, let, let's just think about Cracker. The Cracker fight, like some people are like, man, Cracker still beat. The Cracker fight was Cracker just shoving as many biscuits as he could to keep himself from getting wrecked. If Luffy had just if Luffy um just like switch to Snake Man and Speed Blitz Cracker and just jump throughout his biscuits before they Cracker. They may not could... have been strong enough to take the biscuits. You could have outsped sped the biscuits, but one, Luffy didn't know about the real body, so he thought he was being Cracker, and two, it, um, like faster forms can't get through the thick biscuits, so he needed Gear Four. Luffy only uses forms that he could that he thinks is good for the situation. So if he had out Gear Four, if that that's the only thing I could take out, his I mean, that's 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 Cracker's power though. You can't, yeah. You can't say his power. No, I'm, I'm saying that Listen. once Luffy figured out how to get past the biscuits, Cracker would have been one shot. He didn't. Yeah, figure but out that's, the that's like saying like wasn't there. He well, got past him. Yeah, like he didn't figure out anything. Nami came along, figured it out for him, and he took advantage of it. He did. I mean, I, I figure out. I, I mean, uh, I mean, to give fair to Luffy, I think he would eventually have figured it, it out. But I don't know if he would have been able to defeat him, even though he figured it out. It probably been someone he has to do like a second fight, you know. Well, I guess Cracker was kind of a bad matchup for him. Like, if you think about it, like who who's uh, Cracker's equivalent is like Jack or something. Like that's the equivalent in the Beast Pirates. Like, I don't think people are gonna be saying that Luffy can't be Jack. It was probably just kind of it's kind of like a matchup thing. But I'm saying like Luffy and like Do Flamingo was a bad matchup for Luffy. But I'm saying, like, Luffy probably, like, Luffy Wait. gets over bad matchups given time. How was it a bad matchup? Because, think about it, especially in Awakening, mm -hmm. Doflamingo did the same thing. Like, Doflamingo, like, his strings were everywhere, and Lu like, he was, compl like, how Cracker was blocking Luffy, Doflamingo was, like, doing the the exact same thing. Luffy only beat him when Luffy did uh -huh. such a big, um, covered such a big area, Doflamingo couldn't keep blocking him, you know what I'm saying? I feel like a bad matchup would be like uh, Inaru 
and um I mean in Aruba, yeah, NL and Luffy, but I feel like that's just them being like better with their fruits and just being way more like stronger at this point. Yeah. Like like I feel like if your fruit inherently gives someone like like an advantage like Luffy to the nails, that was a bad matchup. I feel like Luffy just couldn't he didn't have the power to overtake it because Luffy was he like he could have broke the biscuit soldier because all all Nami did really was lower the defense of it. No, if he could Luffy, break the, the biscuit soldier higher. He would have been able to break through it if Luffy had higher attack, but he didn't. So yeah, he, no, he didn't break through enough. To no, break Luffy just actually. wasn't fast enough. Luffy no, was breaking the biscuits enough. easily. No, 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 he, when, he, no, he, he broke the biscuit the soldier at the beginning to fight. No, when yeah, he got they, they were tanking, they were tanking like all these hits. What do you mean? No, no they were getting four. destroyed. No, yeah, he, what happened was Luffy, oh, was, oh, Luffy was Luffy was in gear. Getting destroyed, but I'm no, saying, like it, he, well, gear Luffy four was destroying them. Speed for power. See, this is this is why Luffy this is why they no couldn't. Form. Luffy this has is, no form that is as powerful or is as fast or is as defensive as another form. So if he was faster, he would have got weaker and he wouldn't have been able to break it. So Gear 4 was the strongest. He went to Snake Man, who would have been weaker. He wouldn't have been able to break it. So the speed wouldn't have mattered. So I'm saying, like, he was just not good enough overall to beat whatever the Biscuit Soldiers threw. I feel like, I feel like I was it saying. was because he was good enough. I feel like it was because Cracker is just, he can create so many soldiers. It'd be like, even though like the Gear 4 punches were uh, destroying them, it was like he kept making more and it's like he couldn't really get to them until like the end of the fight, where it's like they both were like super exhausted. Well, honestly, King Kong Gun, like, but, did... but if Kaido was there, but if Kaido was there, he would have speed blitzed all the biscuits. Well, guys. but that's just because right. Kaido. Strong. Or he was strong. No, no, hold on, hold on. He was strong enough to break him, and he was fast enough to get there before he made it. Because that's his overall. That's not like his fruit. That's not like his hockey. He's just strong in that aspect. And I'm saying Luffy is not strong enough to go against Cracker himself because Cracker's fruit and his abilities gave him that defense. Like that's he's even. Luffy has gear four. Cracker has whatever. Crack, Cracker doesn't. He didn't go into a form. Like he he didn't do like. Well, a that's because Cracker's. That's just not what Cracker the fruit is like. But like I think that. That the fight was a little bit plot armored on Cracker's side because if you think about it, if Luffy jumped up, like did that like jump up thing in Gear Fourth, and just did um King Kong Gun like from way above, like Cracker wouldn't have been able to defend against that. I that would have like... destroyed all the biscuits with Cracker in them. So like yeah. Luffy uh, just my... was like. Luffy just some stuff like with the Katakuri fight. Some people are surprised he didn't use King Kong Gun, but like the reason he didn't use King Kong Gun is because like Oda wanted the story to take a different turn. Like I'm, I know some people use that as an excuse, but I'm just thinking logically. If Luffy jumped over them, so like he was completely over them and just destroyed them all with one gigantic smash, aka King Kong Gun, which he could have done. Like in the area Cracker was in, he would have just destroyed them all with one punch. But he didn't. Yeah, I, I feel like that is true. But I feel like the thing is that Cracker and Cat Curry just didn't allow him to do that. Like they didn't allow him to to uh jump up there and do that attack. Well, I feel like he could have, because if he just like did the Kong Orkin gun thing he did, and just like like he could have he could have made he would have only needed like one second to jump up because the biscuit soldiers they're not really long range. They're kind of just like the up and at him. They're like infantry. Like, they wouldn't have been able to shoot him. All he would have needed is, like, one second to get up in the air and start flying. You don't think the business soldiers could follow him in the air? You know, they could, like, jump up in the air and, like, attack Luffy? I feel like that's what happened throughout the fight. But I know, I mean, it is story-wise, but it is kind of part of Luffy's personality. Like, he underestimates people yeah. who fights all the time. Like, yeah, he doesn't he does. go all the way out. Yeah. But like and King that Kong, but, cost him his life, but plot armor. <laughs> no, but yeah. the point is, I'm saying King Kong Gun would have been able to effectively take out Cracker and yeah, all the have. surrounding biscuits yeah. in his vicinity if Luffy had, or o if Luffy had decided to, or if Oda decided for him to do that. So I don't think it's fair to be like Luffy didn't have the power to take out Cracker because we know he has something that could take out Cracker. It, it could have. I just don't think Cracker lit him. I think that's probably yeah. what happened in eight hours that we didn't see off screen, but <clears throat> we're not going to talk about that, but I, I think <laughs> he did. No, logically, I think Luffy did, but Cracker just didn't allow it to happen, you know? Like, I, I don't yeah. see why Cracker would just allow him to jump in the air. Like, I mean, I know there's a Shona Dane that just let the person attack first, but if he's just jumping in the air randomly, low, he's trying to hit me from upward. Let me stop that. 
I'm gonna jump in the air and slice them or something like. Yeah, like I, I feel like um, like tactical maneuvers like that can't really be taken into consideration when like oh he could have done this. Oh. I feel shut up, my dog. <laughs> I feel like um, like whatever. Your dog sounds like, like a him. For real, like like whatever <laughs> my uh, like whatever the character can do. Whenever they get beat, they do it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like we can assume that Luffy tried everything because they fought for eleven hours. There's no possible way this man didn't yeah. jump and throw down a punch because he does it all the time, like you said. But not a just, giant punch shown. like King Kong Gun. Like but King Kong Gun. That. We have eleven hours un- unaccounted for. Unless you can give me the the tape for that, you can't say he didn't do it. So I just feel no. Like but you can't say he did do it. Like Oda, like that's like one of his biggest trump cards. Like saying you can't say he didn't do it. You can't say he did do it because we he did do that during the Katakuri fight. Like he. We, but we didn't what? see the whole fight, is my exact point. Listen, like you, you're saying like we saw every punch thrown in the fight. We didn't. We have 11 hours unaccounted for. No, much. but the thing is, so, if, if Luffy used King Kong gun, like, I know that this is getting a bit technical, but the whole, there would have been a giant crater because, like, he basically destroyed Dress Rosa when he threw that punch. Like, the whole force they were fighting in would have been decimated if, it, if he'd thrown King Kong gun. Listen, I'm not I'm not arguing that Oda isn't trash because let's remember. I dropped, <laughs> no, listen, listen. I dropped One Piece for like two months, so, and I still have a hop back on. So, yeah, but that uh, that's not what I'm arguing. I just think that it is true that that's probably what Luffy did. I know it's a probably, but I just have to assume that. I know I know it's bad. He has to kind of assume stuff, but I feel like like I feel like Cracker would be like okay, like we smarter than Oda right now, okay. I feel like yeah. logically Cracker would be able to do it. Cracker would stop him from jumping in the air and trying to throw like a big punch. Like he sees Luffy gathering, like getting his fist bigger. He goes, Oh, let me stop that before he Nobody can't because Luffy would be like, Luffy would because be we like, gotta remember, we would... gotta remember, we gotta remember the only reason why uh Cracker had because I feel like, yeah, of course that had to happen because Cracker had attacked Luffy at the end of the fight, but it's just. It was a difference, like right. I feel like it, if he goes up in the air and King Kong gun gets his fist bigger, he's open, and then I feel like Cracker had attacked him. I feel like that's what it happened. Nah, when because... he tried to do it again to end the fight, but the difference was when he attacked him, he got sucked inside his stomach and got sent flying across the island. But but like nah, because Luffy Cracker, like what we saw, Cracker, his biscuit soldiers could jump, but like when Luffy did that King Kong gun, remember, uh, Gear Force can fly. He was like. A hundred or like a hundred fifty or even two hundred feet above the city when he threw the punch. Or like if Luffy just started flying and he like crackers biscuits, they're good, but they're not gonna be. I don't even think they're gonna be jumping like fifty feet. And Luffy can get like fifty feet really fast I don't see in what he form. I, don't see so like, cracker, he, I think he could get out of crackers though. range pretty easily. I don't well, see why they, I don't cracker see why they couldn't jump in that air, but. So I feel like Cracker <laughs> at that moment would jump out the Cracker biscuit and use his like third commander ness to jump up there and get back in the Cracker biscuit. No, nah, but you Cracker, know, if, you know, if Luffy can jump that high, Cracker can jump that high. No, he yeah. can't because that, that's what I'm saying. What do you Luffy mean ain't like, jumping. Luffy like is flying. No, Luffy's not jumping. That's what I'm saying. Luffy is literally flying. Yeah, but but um, Cracker ain't but, jumping but, but, where people uh, are flying. But Dressrosa has an entire unit that can use uh, the damn Skywalk. So you know Oda could just easily be like, oh, um, I learned it from one of the Skywalk people and jumped up there. So yeah, but no, like, but it's, Cracker. It's easy, as you can say, Luffy can do this. We can make it so that Cracker can do the same thing. No, but we know Luffy can do that. We have no reason to think that Cracker could do anything you just said. But we know Luffy can do what I just said. Like, we've seen him do it. We have not seen Cracker. Cracker is kind of a more Earth like down to earth kind of guy. We don't have any reason. We don't, don't even have a small jump, hint period, to say that he could that moonwalk. He uh, we but we know what well, we we've never seen. But not two hundred feet. We can, we can surmise that he can jump. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but not two hundred feet. Like Luffy is flying and he's not jumping. And plus that Luffy's the rubber guy, so he like he's like okay, rubber. Right, like his right. devil specializes right, in jumping. I will give you that. So Luffy jumps up two hundred feet in the air. So he has to come down to punch the the people, right? Like like once he's ready to punch, he has to throw that punch down, right? Yeah. What stops Cracker from jumping up and either deflecting, blocking, or just getting out of the way in general? Because nothing no, but says the King slow. Kong gun like, is there's like nothing in there that says he's slow enough to be hit by a King Kong gun. 
No, but King Kong Gun is it's like slow, covering like attack that you can see coming. No, I'm but it's also so big attack that it's like cracker. Like I don't care what you anyone can't says, get cracker. Out of the way. A third commander well, can evade well, a King Kong no, Gun. No, cat cracker might be able to go that fast. But mm -hmm. You'd like need, but you'd like need to be able to be like because cracker. So let me <clears throat> let me explain. Well, one for one. Cracker's not going to be blocking King Kong Gun unless he gets some biscuits we didn't see that he didn't use against Luffy. And two, Cracker, the way Cracker was portrayed, Cracker relies heavily on his defense. Like, the way Cracker thinks, the way Cracker fights, it re it revolves around his defense, not his speed, and not necessarily his attack power. It revolves around his defense. So, that's why I'm kind of saying, I'm not sure Cracker can run half a city's length, like, in like three oh no seconds. no hold on because King he... Kong Gun was not half a city's length. He knocked Do Flamingo into half a city and destroyed it. But that's well, not half a city, a but it's still big. Like no, Cracker his fist isn't as big as half a city. His fist just gets like bigger than like a little bit bigger than his body. Like maybe double his body, but not that big. So he can definitely get out of the way of that. King I got Kong a question isn't that big. Hmm. I got a question, right? Uh yeah. going by Luffy's strength at that point in time, if he had awakening. Uh, do you think he could have beat a uh, Cracker or oh, maybe he's... even uh Katakiri? He would have decimated Cracker. I think his awakening is something that he would have to work on. So I don't think him getting it is going to be a trump card that boosts him to Yonko level because he still has to. Master. No, no, I'm not talking about Yonko level. Master. I'm just talking about Katakiri. I'm just talking about Katakiri and Cracker. They, if okay, let's not even let's not even do what it is. Yeah, like. This. I think in order to beat someone like Katakuri, you have to be like above him or on his level, which would be Yonko level. So I was just saying, like, he I mean, wouldn't jump up to that range to beat Katakuri. Well, I th I think no, him. I just think that awakening. Once I mean, he, he did, works I mean, on he awakening, did beat him, but it was like you know technical stuff. But yeah, if, he, it, 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 it was a moral life. victory because Luffy yeah. walked out alive and he got his he 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 obtained his objective. I think, that's why he won. I think it would have been beat him, beat him. Katakuri. Winning and beating him is different, I think. Yeah, winning and beating are definitely different. But, like, um, uh, with the Awakening thing, like, I think Awakening, if Luffy just was able to, like, before, like not get it in the middle of the fight, even though the middle of the fight might catch the other opponent off guard, depending on what the Awakening was. But if Luffy just, like, worked with it and came in with Awakening, he'd definitely be safely first commander level, maybe even a little bit above. If you add a new form to that, like gear five or like a an ultimate form of gear fourth, I think that's like putting him at Admiral level. And then if you've got like the really, oh, really advanced hockey, like elemental hockey and like harder hockey, I do not think that's a stretch to say with super advanced um hockey, a devil fruit awakening, and a new OP form, like all of that mixed together, and maybe even something a little extra. Like I don't think that's a long shot to say that form would be Yonka level. I, I really think don't. it definitely would be a long shot because the people we saw talking about awakening were in their thirties and forties, and they've had their fruit for God knows how long. Most of the time, almost a decade plus, and those are the people we saw that had uh, awakening. And even when we saw awakening, Doflamingo put Harden on his awakening, and we know Dofly was a maniac with his fruit. And he spent many because we saw him get as a kid. We can compare it to Luffy, but we can clearly see Doflamingo is better with his fruit and hockey and fighting in general, mainly because he's older, has more experience. But you know, Luffy just doesn't have experience right now. He didn't get hockey and become a beast. He I got hate to say it, but for two years with one of the greatest people in the story, and then he became a beast. So him well, getting his awakening but... off rip isn't going to make him a god. He's going to get his hockey. I mean, he's going to get his awakening train track however many years or months or whatever he's got to do. He's going to be good with it. He's definitely going to bump up in level, but he's not going to become a god. I think well, like, I, the level y'all talking about is going to take more time than what y'all giving him right now. Well, here's the thing. Well, one, um, like I wouldn't, I think like uh, a couple months training isn't, uh, I've, I could definitely see that, see that happening. But also, right. this is where people start to get touchy. But like what you said about age and stuff, I hate to say it, but Luffy's the main character. He, It's going to be inconsistent when it comes to things like that. Just right, right. because he's the focal point of the story. Right. And we so see like, that with hockey. His hockey took two years. That shit usually takes like a lifetime, but he had yeah. two great things on his side. Main right. character and Rayleigh. So he had like a double main character boost. Well, I feel but, like after Rayleigh taught him all that stuff, he can kind of 
after really taught him all that stuff, I think like he can kind of evolve by himself now. Like he like he might have somebody else help him, but I think like after being trained by Rayleigh, like I don't think Rayleigh just taught him stuff. I think Rayleigh taught him how to grow on his own. I kind of yeah, think but that he's gonna makes... need a specialist though, because whenever Luffy learns something as acute and special as the awakening of a devil fruit, you're gonna need either a master or a whole bunch of time to yourself. And I think Marco's gonna teach him. That. Right, I think right, Marco's right. gonna I, teach him. All I'm saying is he needs another teacher. He won't be because Luffy's not mature enough yet. I feel like that self yeah. growth we're talking about is the Luffy we're gonna get probably at the end of the story or at, at the epilogue when he's actually an adult, a man, like being a, like having a serious face. Not not well, his character's probably still gonna be the same, but he's gonna have that seasoning on him to where it's like Luffy can take care of shit by himself. You know what I'm well, saying? I, well I, I wouldn't be surprised if Marco uh, taught Luffy awakening since Marco's almost undoubtedly an awakened Zoan. Mm, you, know you, know you know what why do you think Marco you know what'd be well, interesting? If yeah. not Marco is actually teaching Luffy but like uh like to say, like, since you're the brother of Ace, right? Um, yeah. what if there would be something like the train for the final war, like the, the white beard pirates, uh, try to train the straw hats? And I could, I, I don't see Marco being the one to train. If that were to happen, I don't see Marco being the one to train Luffy. I could see him training drum roll because we, we, we know the dude who Sabo thinks is the strongest character in the series. I could see him training <laughs> Chomper because they're both. <laughs> Right, they're both zones. Wow. So I can see him training Chomper. That would right? be crazy. Like, you know, like that, Chomper jumps that, up that, like the be... fourth strongest in the crew. <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious. Be wild. <laughs> but Vulture, to answer your question, the reason I think Marco's awakening, oh, not awakening, is awakened is well. For for one thing, well, I guess he is the first commander and stuff. But the reason is like, if anyone, if you go up to kid and you're like, hey, buddy. What color is the phoenix? He's going to say red. He's going to say yellow. Or he's going to say, like, orange. He's going to say, like, the color of fire. But since Marco is a blue phoenix, like, when things like that happen, like, when devil fruits change color or something, like, I feel like that the reason his... And you know how people are saying that Sabo's awakening is going to be blue fire? I think the reason Marco is blue is not because his devil fruit is just like, oh, we're just going to make you a blue phoenix. I think it's because he awakened his devil fruit, and that's why he can heal so well. And Like, he can heal as well as he does, and the reason his dev his flames are blue is because when he awakened his devil fruit, his flames subs subsequently changed color. I feel like that would be a good theory, but we've seen that most awakenings are activation based and you kind of have to do that with myth mythical zones. Most of their powers are kind of like, all right, you get the zone form and you kind of get a secondary power. So there's more evidence to say that, you know, awakenings are more like for battle oriented or just like it's a big grandiose thing we've seen marco heal people in the village in his base form without even transforming so i don't think awakening just kind of transform everything about your fruit to where you can do stuff in base form because i think his mystic power was already healing and then that healing just overshadowed the fact that most phoenixes are fire and it's like hey you're a phoenix you can transform but the power we're going to give you is the healing aspect not the necessary fire aspect because you know i've seen phoenixes but i don't really recall phoenixes having like just these flame attacks you know what i'm saying like they, it was it, it was more well, about yeah. them being coming back to life more than anything when right you think about well, things. well i'm saying i think that his healing aspect like when he awakened like since we haven't seen his own awakening like i feel like he probably just i think i feel like his awakening kind of just it, it boosts his strength too i yeah. guess but it really it really um, upped his healing factor. So, like, the reason, like, when someone like a Kainu just completely bulldozes him, he's there's not a scratch on him. Like, and I think that the blue fire and stuff is. I feel. I feel like the blue fire is ultra healing fire, kind of. That's just kind of my own small opinion in that area, but. Well, I think that's what it is. Like, it's a fire, but it's healing. I think that's what. You yeah. Know, Oda said it was. I think you're right on that. But I just, I'm just saying, like, I don't think there's a bleeding effect when it comes to awakenings because we really haven't seen that. Marco could be like a foreshadowing. You could be right. Like, we haven't yeah. seen it, but this is what it is. Like, but but we haven't seen it with other types. It may be different right. because we haven't seen other awakened mystic zones except for Kaido. So unless your ability holds up there, I mean, you, unless your theory kind of is going there, that'd be dope because we know Kaido. Well, not know. But we think Kaido's a mystic zone. And if that bleeding thing happens, just like Marco's flames changing color, 
because he awakened it, then maybe Kaido's awakened gives him that defense. And that'd yeah. be cool. That'd be cool. Fucking awakenings, man. But yeah, I think Luffy uh, is not going to be I, earlier. I'm trying to jump all the way back to this, but you said Luffy is going to be the most OP in the series. No, I said his his awakening could potentially be one of the most OP because of what we've seen of Luffy and like all the destructive power he has. If he awakened like as vulcanized rubber or something, like that destructive um capabilities would be like times ten or even like times twenty. That's why I said that. Oh, okay. So in in the DC area, he would be like up there with like a Kainu and Whitebeard and stuff. Or would it be, like, way below? Yeah, I don't know. What does DC stand for? Sorry, I'm stupid. Oh, so I'm sorry. Destructive, um, uh, destructive capability. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Like, in destructive capability, like, Whitebeard and Akaino are kind of different because, like, Whitebeard... It's like, more he area made... of effect and stuff. Yeah, but, but like, I mean, like... Pinpoint damage, he can do the same. Yeah, right? like, it, like, I mean, in terms of pinpoint damage, like, he wouldn't be as strong as Kaido, but he'd be kind of, like... A, like with, with with just the awakening, it's like you know how Kaido's like super brute strength, it'd kind of be like that, except just way weaker. Okay, I can see that. Well, if if Z-boy, what weaker, were you trying to how say? How are we gonna? How is he gonna be able to get through? You know, like these Yonkos with these impregnable defenses. Well, he wouldn't just have awakening. He'd have he'd have a combination, combination of things. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm saying it, like I'm saying when he becomes Yonka level, it'll be a combination of things. It won't just be like one thing. Like his awakening made him Yonka level. It won't just be his hockey. It won't just be his awakening. It won't just be a new form. It won't just be something we haven't thought of. It'll be like a combination of all of those together. Okay, so he. In the top fighters we've seen so far, we really haven't seen you one with a Kempo or like a fighting style, you know, of some degree. We've only really seen bruisers and like street fighters like Luffy. Well, Shanks technically is a swordsman, so I guess you can count that. But it's like, um, do you think we'll see anybody with like Kung Fu? I guess in another word to Kung before, Fu Fishman, points. Fishman Karate, something like that, getting up in the top tier. Because I feel like that should be up there since you yeah, know, I do. it deals with fighting. And, but and I know exactly who. Tech, who? Chopper. Pump food point. It's going to be the most OP. <laughs> it's going to be the uh, most OP power in the whole <laughs> series. I, I, I think I'm throwing my um, my vote for uh, Sabo. Like, I think Sabo's going to get there and be one of the top fighters. I think Sabo's going to... Uh, just a small theory from me. I think Akainu's going to kill Dragon... And then Sabo's gonna be like, boy, you killed my brother and you killed my like adoptive dad guy, kind of. So I'm gonna <laughs> I'm just like what? gonna kill you. I think Sabo's gonna kill a kainu. That's what I'm trying to say. Yo, yeah, that's hilarious. He's like, I think Sabo's gonna be like, bro, you you killed my brother, right? That's it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> who, who the fuck this guy is? You killed him and I'm pissed off. <laughs> you basically start throwing hands. I feel it. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, is there any point where Luffy will over overtake Sabo in strength? Yes, I like. Well, like I think they're always going to be really close. But I think when push comes to shove, Luffy will eventually be the strongest character in the series. Even well, like that... it won't be like a ton. It won't be like Naruto and Sasuke. Like where Naruto and Sasuke are the strongest and they dwarf everybody. But I think like. Luffy's gonna just have that slight advantage. Like, you know how Roger and Whitebeard, like, Whitebeard was stronger than everybody else, but, like, if Whitebeard w- fights Kaido, he's not gonna be one-shotting Kaido, right? You right. know what I'm saying? But he's, I think it's kind of gonna be like that. That makes sense. You think that's good or bad for, like, the whole series if Luffy ends up being the strongest kind of at the end? Or you think it's, like, I think good it's, fulfillment? I think it's gonna be good, like, because it's not like he's gonna be, like, over way 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 overpowered he's just gonna be like the strongest like how roger like roger and whitebeard because people say since whitebeard's the strongest man like well whitebeard could kind of destroy the world but we know roger like roger was said because whitebeard he's the strongest man in the world but then at the same time roger they said nobody could match his fighting skill so like they were I thought he to- got the title of world's strongest man after roger died well, because, Kai, like Legend Mac, you know Legend Mac. You guys know Legend Mac. 
Yeah. He thinks Kaido is like the most physically strongest, but like I don't know, man. I don't know. No, because I, I was uh, I was saying that like that whole the moniker of world strongest man I thought only came after Roger died. So it was like Roger was the strongest man. No, they didn't give him that title, and then no, Whitebeard no. got the strongest title. It was revealed in the Viver card or something, a Viver card or an SBS, I forget which one. That Whitebeard was called the strongest man while Roger was still alive, and that sparked a whole ton of debates. Okay. Yeah, because that, that doesn't make sense, but I, f- I feel it, I guess. I, I f- maybe yeah. it was like Whitebeard was more fighting more people and actually like beating more people than Roger and looking more impressive, but just Roger get doing what he did made him the king of the pirates. So it's not like a combat title. So if that is the case, going along with that headcanon to where his pirate king isn't a combat title, seeing as though the world's strongest man was around when the pirate king was founded, so they're not mutually exclusive to each other. So it would be like, who do you think is going to be the strongest man to Luffy's pirate king while he's on that journey? Kid. How, you don't think it's going to be Law? With his, no, because the thing is with Law, like the, well, basically what I'm saying is like, we saw Luffy, Law, and a Kid like standing at um Sabaudi. Like Oda said at the time, he had, like since he just made them like, what, like, like, before they were released, like, he only, like, he said something like he only thought of them a day or a week before they were re- released or something. So, like, when Luffy made them, he didn't have, like, a lot of plans. But he said at the time, like, he didn't really have any plans for Law, only, like, vague plans for Kid. But now we know he has plans for Law, obviously. Like, no one's denying that. But Law kind of seems like he's Luffy's friend at this point rather than his rival, you feel me? Like, I they seem like, like they're friends he- now. I feel like it seems like he friend that like they're friends because they're hanging around each other and people kind of like want that. But think of Law's demeanor this entire time. He said he owed him. He they're, they're going on on the journey. Every chance he gets, he's like basically face palming like these guys are a bunch of fucking idiots. And then <laughs> uh, fucking someone who's not even in the Straw Hats insulted Luffy. I mean, insulted Law Shinobu, and he was ready to leave. And it's like, I don't think Luffy's friend would be that wit, like that quick to be like, all right, well, I'm out of here. You insulted, you know, which, which was a big offense. But he was ready to get up out of there. So I don't even know if he's technically in the alliance now because he really could have left after that, you know, thing. So, yeah, yeah, they was like in an alliance, but in an alliance, you're supposed to be friendly. So I don't think like Law is Luffy's lapdog the way people are putting it now. Well, That's I don't think they're lapdogs. I think that it's kind of like how, like, um, Let's see, like, not Naruto and Sasuke, because that would, like, imply that Luffy and Lara are, like, best friends and rivals. But I feel like it's kind of, like, that equal kind of friendship. Like, um, like I respect you, you respect me. We're kind of on the same plane here. Like, I'm not saying Law's going to, like, only be, like, as strong as Doflamingo and Luffy's going to go to, like, Yonko level or something. Like, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, I think that Kid, just because of, like, like, I know a lot of people don't think this. I think the story will prove me right, but that's beside the point. Like, Kid, all the things he's done and, like, all the things he's been hyped up to be, and, like, the respect Luffy giving Kid without even seeing him fight. Because in, like, Sabaudi, like, Kid did do, like, Kid, in the anime, Kid made a giant, like, kind of like a gear third fist, but metal. Like, Kid never even did that. So Luffy's, like, barely even seen Kid fight, but Luffy's giving Kid so much respect, even so. Like, he's giving Kid a ton of respect, like, almost, like, more respect than he, like, than he's, like, given Zoro and stuff. And then How is he's he giving, giving him like, respect? I need to stop there for a sec. What do you mean giving no, him respect? He's giving him respect, like, like, for example, when Kid came back in the prison, like, Luffy wasn't like, oh, yeah, he's weak. Luffy said, did he turn himself, like, he said, did he come back intentionally? Like, in Luffy's mind, there was like no that way... Was Luffy, no, well, well, no. I'm saying in Luffy's mind, there was no way that kid actually lost a fair fight. Like Luffy hadn't even seen him fight, and that's the conclusion he came to. But you know but what I'm saying? You heard the guard say that he took the damage without putting up a, a resistance. So I feel like Luffy was just doing his 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 empath thing because you know Luffy can feel feelings of people really well. That's kind of his thing. The voice of all things. He has a deep understanding of things that he has really no information about, like you said. But in this instance, he got the information right before because the guards was telling him what happened. And he was like, all right, using my voice of all things and what I just heard, 
this guy who's got out of prison by himself without even making a big ruckus about it just got he's just walking back in he's not unconscious he's not dead but he's walking he's not fighting anyone right now he's definitely something happened so i feel like luffy was just kind of like analyzing the situation more than paying like respects to him he was just trying to well, figure out what's going on well that's kind of that's valid i guess but like i don't like i don't really want to turn this stream i don't really want to turn the stream into the kid stream because like to be honest I argue with people about kid like every single day, and I made a whole seventeen minute video on kid, and I put like all the facts of ever ever gathered about kid. So I don't want to like. Oh my bad! I wasn't thing. trying to. I wasn't trying to like stir it that way. I just wanted to give you. No, you I'm know, not. Influence. I'm not saying you were, but I mean like, I want to talk about new things because like the kid topic is kind of old for me at this point. Okay. Yo, the cons though. What was he said? Valid or something? Valid? I said valid, but yeah. I guess that's. Fine. I'm not hating on valid. But yeah, um, so uh, Luffy's awakening. What else did you want to talk about with that? Yeah, this one is kind of like just not pertaining to strength, but I just kind of curious. What do y'all think it'll look like? Z boy. Uh, I'm still going with my Godzilla, my Godzilla man, dude. Hey, I'm kind of, I'm kind of thinking his skin will like be darker. Like I don't know exactly like what shape he'll be because like nobody expected the Bowman shape, right? So I don't know what shape it'll be, but I think his skin will get a bit darker and like you know the kind of the pattern on tire rubber, like the rubber on your tires, like that traction thing. Yeah. I think his skin might kind of look like that. That'd be pretty dope. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'm kind of thinking it'll look like. The way Luffy's been going about, like, you know, fighting so far, he's definitely, it's not, I don't think it's going to be a pure awakening, so I think he's mm -hmm. going to put some hockey with it, obviously. Um, yeah. I, I'm thinking it's going to be him just kind of uh, with the hockey more on his arms, but more in like a, like, you know how usually it stops around his forearm? I feel like it's yeah. going to be kind of more... Um, it's it's gonna be halfway between Bowman and just regular hardening because mm. of like ba Bowman's whole thing is punching, but it's like I feel like he's gonna be doing that force palm thing. So it's gonna be mainly focused on his hands, and it may not even go all the way up. But I feel like maybe it'll stop around like his elbow or like his like bicep or something like that. And then mm. it's gonna be more of like a sumo wrestler type of deal, like like Tank Man, but like seriously, like a serious Tank Man. So I feel like he's gonna be there. like he's he's he he he's gonna be bigger than Bound Man. He's gonna have like a uh, force palm kind of like uh, what's that dude's name off Street Fighter? Like the big sumo dude. Him. It's it's it's, it's gonna be modeled after that. I think. Yeah, I've been playing Street Fighter though, so I don't know. Maybe never played Street Fighter, day. but yeah, nah. just, um, well, e E Honda. That's what it is. E Honda. That dude. It's gonna be it's, it's gonna be more of a force palm type deal, not really a punch. Mm. And yeah. Well, I think that kind of wraps it up for the stream, because I got things to do. I'm sure you guys got things to do. Yeah, finals but, on tonight. Yeah. Oh, they are. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of dropped off of basketball and stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you enjoy my content, and only if you enjoy my content, like the stream, subscribe to Vulture Valley and Z Boys channels. Links will be in the description. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next stream. Hey.